Growing up, we are often told to open our heart and look into our heart. Most people don't take that advice too hard. But one man did, and we are forever indebted to him. That man was... On June 18, 1913, Dr. Wilfred Abram Bigelow and Grace Ann Gordon welcomed a healthy baby boy into the world. They named him Wilfred Gordon Bigelow because coming up with original names is hard. Little Wilfred was destined for a career in medicine from the time he was born. His father, Dr. Wilfred Abram Bigelow, started up Canada's first private medical clinic, and his mother, Grace Ann Gordon, was a nurse and a midwife. Bigelow received his basic education at Brandon Collegiate, Brentwood College in Victoria, B.C., and Brandon College, where he received his bachelor's. He then moved east to study medicine at the University of Toronto, from which he graduated in 1938. Postgraduate medical-slash-surgical training included surgical residencies under Dr. W.E. Galley at the Toronto General Hospital from 1938 to 1941. In July of 1941, Bigelow tied the knot to Margaret Ruth Jennings, who was then the head nurse at the Toronto General Hospital. Bigelow's medical training was interrupted by the beginning of World War II. However, during the Second World War, he served in the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps Field Transfusion Unit from 1941 to 1942, and then as graded surgeon with the 6th Canadian Casualty Clearing Station, a mobile army surgical hospital, in England, Normandy, and northwestern Europe from 1942 to 1945. It was here, when he had to amputate a man's frostbitten fingers, that he became fascinated with hypothermia and how it could help the body. Once the war was over, Bigelow moved from medicine on the front lines to medicine in the hospitals. He returned to his training and completed a research fellowship at John Hopkins University Hospital from 1946 till 1947, where he trained in vascular and cardiac surgery under Dr. Richard Bling and Dr. Alfred Blalock, the founder of modern cardiac surgery. Bigelow then continued his research on how hypothermia could be used to help medical patients. He originally thought about cooling limbs to see if you could protect them. Then one night he had a dream and woke up and said, why not cool the whole body and make open heart surgery possible? This was a very controversial idea. Many doctors in the medical community thought that using hypothermia could kill the patient. However, Bigelow pursued and researched the subject for five years, staying dedicated. Through his research into hypothermia, Bigelow also came up with another important medical breakthrough. One morning in 1949, during a hypothermia experiment, the heart stopped. After not responding to cardiac massage, Bigelow chose to prod the heart with a metal rod. It then responded. It was then revealed that an electrical impulse could do the same for the heart. Through accidental experimentation, Bigelow had discovered the concept of an electric pacemaker. On September 2, 1952, all of Dr. Bigelow's hard work finally paid off when the first successful open heart surgery was performed by Dr. C. Walton Lillehigh and Dr. F. John Lewis at the University of Minnesota. Bigelow had many titles during his medical career. He was appointed to the surgical staff at the Toronto General Hospital in 1947 and as associate professor in the Department of Surgery at the University of Toronto in 1948. 1953, he was appointed head 3rd Division's General Surgery at TGH. From 1956 until his retirement in 1977, he served as head of the Cardiovascular Surgery Division at the Toronto General and from 47 to 77 as director of the Cardiovascular Laboratory in the Banting Research Institute where he made most of his progress in researching hypothermia and cardiac pacemaker technology. 
He also served on the surgical staff of Sunnybrook Hospital and as consultant in cardiovascular surgery to Women's College Hospital. His post-retirement appointments include positions as Professor Emeritus of Surgery at the University of Toronto and as Consulting Surgeon at TGH. From 77 to 79, he served as Executive Director of the Toronto General Hospital Foundation. Not really like a heart X. No. Eyes, dream. 